Hello everyone and welcome to my studio. Join me today and let's paint this beautiful monarch butterfly. These are the basic supplies you need and then you'll need a purples or blues to paint a flower on. I'll go over those colors later and they will all be down in the description. I'm going to start out by putting a coat of Mod Podge on my stone. Then it's able to kind of fill in some of the holes that might be there and gives it a great base that the paint can adhere to. I'm going to dry it quickly with my little heat gun. And then we're going to draw on the butterfly. Basically, it's two triangles. There's a little body. And you can paint any kind of flower you want. I kind of did mine in a more contemporary style. And this is just a basic outline. And as I paint it, I'll make the lines nice and smooth. You'll be able to do that too. I'm going to start with a cadmium yellow, and that will be the base coat for this butterfly's wings. I do put three coats down. We'll go over those, and I'll speed it up so you don't have to just sit there and wait while I paint them all. The first coat of yellow is usually rather messy looking, and that's okay. The second coat will fill that in really nice, and the third coat will make it just a beautiful yellow. All right, this is coat number two. See the difference? It's already just filling in nicely. But I do want it to be a very bright yellow. As we add some of the orange shading into this, it'll make it a much brighter and cleaner looking set of wings. Mm -hmm. I'm not patient, so I'm going to dry it again with my heat gun. And here is coat number three. And then, again, I'm going to let this dry. And we'll be using Scarlet. Scarlet is beautiful reddish orange and we're going to apply this in a shaded fashion it doesn't have to be perfect by any means because when you put the black on the wings it's going to look gorgeous anyway but i do like to have this orange closer to the inside of the wings next to the body we're going to go over this a couple times as we blend so i, I put the orange on kind of outline along the edges and what I do is come back in with yellow and pull it back into the orange and that helps with the shading. And like I say, this does not have to be perfect because the black that covers the wings is just going to fill it in and it's going to be striking. Okay. Right now we're going to let those wings dry. We'll come back to them one more time and we're going to go ahead and put the black on the body get that filled in for now don't touch the wings because they're probably still a little bit wet another thing about this mod podge is if you get out of line and you don't like it you can go back with a q-tip and literally erase any of the paint that you have that is out of the line i'm going to brighten the wings on the outside with pure yellow I want the edges to be very bright. I'm going to blend in that orange a little bit more. And I'm going to make a stripe close to the edge on the outside of the wings. All the way around the wing. I do hold my rocks when I'm painting. So I apologize because I know I move it around a lot, but I have always held my stones when I paint so I can turn them any way that I want them to be. And it makes my paint strokes go on easier because I like to pull my brush down towards me. And here I am outlining the butterfly with black ink. Remember, I do thin this black ink down, the black paint down to an ink type consistency. And that makes it easier for the flow of the paint. And then it doesn't skip, so you don't have to keep going over it again and again and, 
it gives you room for error when you have to do it that way. And there we have it. I'm going to kind of scallop the outside of the edge with black. Right here you can't see it too, too well, but I'll show you in just a second. I'm just rounding out the wings and making them look a little bit more graceful. You could also put dots in those scallops if you wanted to later. Now you can see it. I'm going to do the same thing to the bottom wing. But not underneath. Let's start with the black lines inside of the wing. I'm going to go right on top or right next to that orange line that we made. And I'm going to put this line all the way around the top part of the wing. And then we're going to start sectioning it off. There's no science to this. I just randomly put the lines in, kind of randomly. Um, well, I spaced them pretty geometrically, the same distance apart, but they're not all straight. They go different directions. When we go back in and we round these corners, it's going to look really, really nice. I'm separating the top of the wing. Going to add those lines on the bottom of the wing. I'm going to bring my line on up to the body. Now we'll add separations, just a few on the bottom part of the wing, like just two. And look at that, it already is looking like a butterfly. I'm going to use my chalk pencil just to kind of see where I want to put the three separations inside of each wing. I don't have to follow my chalk lines, but it gives me an idea where I want them to be. The chalk lines will come right off with a very just damp paper towel or a baby wipe or a Q-tip. So I have three, uh, three lines added there. And now we're going to round these corners. So everywhere that there's a sharp corner, I go back in with the thin zero liner paintbrush and round those corners. And honestly, after you do this, you can stop painting. I do keep adding lines to it because I like to make them a little detailed. And we'll add some highlights to the wings later. But just rounding all of these corners off and it makes it look like a much more graceful butterfly. But it's really easy to do. I have a friend who's building a butterfly garden and she had five different dishes out for the butterflies and they're for monarchs and she has thistle growing for them and special water trays for them and so what I did was I adopted one of her butterfly gardens by giving her this stone and if you painted a butterfly stone you could adopt one of her gardens and the stone goes in the little dish tray for the butterflies to stand on so they can drink water. I guess butterflies can't drink water when they're flying. They have to be sitting on a flat surface. Okay, let's do the bottom part down here. Look how easy this is. They look so intricate, and they are, but if you go step by step, it works out pretty nicely. I'm going to continue filling in the detail on this bottom wing. I'll be painting the lines over the chalk lines that I had made and rounding them out as I go. And actually, after you've finished this section, you could stop here and not add any more detail. But I like to add one more layer into these wings, and I won't be rounding that section out. So I'll be putting two lines within those sections that are open on the butterfly wings. I'm not going to round out their corners. You can if you want to. It would look really nice if you did. 
could be doing the same thing to the bottom wing, but going down towards the point on the wing in the opposite direction from the ones on the top. I hope that makes sense. And here's a good picture of what I had just finished doing. And now we're going to start working on the flower. I'm using lilac for my flower. And what it's going to be is kind of rounded on the top with a little cone shape underneath it. It will have shading with the darker purple and some white to give it some dimension. It will have petals, but they'll be cupped around the flower. They won't be open petals like a daisy or anything like that. And you can paint any kind of flower you want here. You could even glue a little flower on and that would be just too cute. All right, brilliant purple is my shading color. It's several shades darker and I'll blend it into the light purple. So the circle part, the open part of the flower, I'm gonna shade it more towards the bottom of the circle and the top of it will still be lighter. And then I'm gonna the, shade the bottom part of the flower and then we'll paint in some different petal flowers that are wrapping around each other. And there's a petal. And we'll work just a little bit on getting dimension in there. I'm curving the petals down right now so they look separate from the rest of the petals. You don't want just a round circle, so you've got to add a little dimension in between them to make them look like they're just overlapping. You can see the flower petals on the inside too. And I'm kind of rounding the ones on the top a little bit so they stand out. A little bit more shading and you can see it's kind of like tulip shaped. Maybe petunia. I just like to paint different random flowers. Poppies are a lot of fun. I'm going to add this green and it's the little part underneath that holds the flower up. I'm going to put a leaf on and it's just going to be jagged edges. I'm going to add a little bit of the citrus green. Nope, this is gecko green. They're almost the same color, just to highlight. I'm putting this on top of the wet green paint so I can shade it and I'm not doing it perfectly. It's a leaf and it's not the focal point of the stone. Just blending it into that dark green. A little bit on the part underneath the flower just where you think the highlights might be hitting it. My light's kind of coming over from the right side of the stone, according to the flower. Let's add a couple antennae up here. The one closest to you is a little bigger, and the one farther away from you, I have it a little bit shorter. I'm gonna put a dot on the end of each one. A little bit of white paint. We're gonna add some highlight to these wings. So I'm using a number three, I think that's a number three, round brush. I'm going to put a light gray highlight going down the body on the right side of the butterfly, just to kind of give it a highlight. And I will pull it all the way down to the tail. The eye is just a white dot, and I'm going to put a little white splash on the top right side of each of these yellow openings that are on the wings and a little bit on the orange too it's right next to the black i'm trying to keep a little bit of the yellow in between the black and the white so they do have white dots on their wings it's turning out pretty good that white really adds a lot of life to this butterfly. Okay, let's put a little black dot on the bottom left side. It can be, if it's going up, it's going to be looking up. If you put it towards um, lower down, it's going to look like it's looking down. 
I'm just putting a couple simple feet on this butterfly. He's getting ready to land on that flower. I'm blending some of the lavender and the white. I wanted to highlight this flower a little bit more. Purple dries darker than it looks when you put it on. When it's wet, it looks lighter and it always gets like two shades darker. And I wanted this flower to also stand out a little bit more. So I'm just putting the white highlights across the top and then I'm going to blend them back in just a little bit with some light purple. A little bit darker. There we go. I know, I move my rock a lot when I'm holding it. I will work on that. My next video, I am going to like find some kind of a brace or pillow to put my arm on so that I hold it still. We'll continue blending in the purples, making it lighter. I want it to stand out just as well. And I think that that one will finish it and it looks pretty decent. Like I said, it's not super realistic. It's just a fun flower. We're going to add some yellow stem into it. That'll give it the final touch that it's needing because it does look like it's missing something here. You could put a red dot on the end of each of these. You could do them in yellow like I'm going to do. And I'm going to add one more tiny one over here. And that's it. We have finished the monarch and the butterfly, except we're going to add a little tiny smile. And I'm going to use the scarlet and just put a little smile on his face. Somehow all my butterflies wind up with a smile on them. And then I'm going to clean off all of the chalk marks that are showing little bit of water on a q-tip and they wipe right off. I'm going to put a final coat of Mod Podge on. I put on at least two coats, makes it nice and smooth. I do use the satin finish because then it stops it from getting the glare when the light's shining on it and then you can see all of the colors really well. It protects it from a light water. I wouldn't put this in full sun but the butterfly is absolutely stunning. I hope that if you like this one, that you'll hit the subscribe and the like button, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.